Hello, and welcome to ANCA 101, Taking Minutes at Board Meetings of Ontario Nonprofits. My name is Benjamin Miller, and I'm a lawyer who serves nonprofits and charities, and I'm of counsel with BIG Charity Law Group. In this video, we'll go over some of the essential elements of taking good minutes for the purposes of meeting your legal requirements under corporate law. We'll first discuss the purpose of minutes, uh, what goes in minutes, and uh, what it takes and doesn't take to make minutes uh, official. A quick disclaimer first, the following presentation is general legal information, not legal advice tailored to your specific situation. If you're looking for advice uh, or training, then reach out to competent legal uh, advisor. Uh, in fact, I'm actually a big fan of uh, writing good minutes, so if you're looking for training, uh, I'd love to discuss with you uh, options uh, for workshops and classes that I can deliver to your secretary uh, or your organization. Um, good minute taking is an art in my view. So let's begin. It's helpful when you're thinking about what to put in and what to leave out of minutes, which is often the most difficult decision in writing minutes, to think about the ultimate purpose of the minutes. Now, minutes can have a lot of purposes. Uh, meeting minutes um, can be put on your website, so you might have an informational uh, function um, to people who aren't at the meeting. Uh, they can serve as a vital link in the institutional memory of the organization. Those are all very important purposes, but for this presentation we will focus on the legal function of minutes. Uh, and as I see it, there are three very important legal functions that meeting minutes have for Ontario nonprofits. The first one is to record what decision was made. So, for example, when a board uh, passes a change to bylaws, that change is effective as of the, dis the resolution passing until um, the, the next uh, members meeting. So there's actually a legal effect and uh, putting it in the minutes um, documents, cements uh, that legal effect. It's the evidence uh, that that legal change actually took place. So uh, that's the first probably most important function of minutes. The second important function, and this is really to protect uh, the directors, is to show that deliberation and due diligence took place. So directors, as I've explained in another video on this channel, uh, directors have a duty of care. They, they need to make their decisions carefully. They need to seek out advice as appropriate. So minutes are a place to document that uh, a discussion really took place, that they really considered all the important issues and if and how they sought out uh, advice if that was appropriate. And finally, and this is to protect individual directors, um, it, minutes are a place to register dissents. So if somebody disagrees with the decision that was taken and they want, they ask specifically for their dissent to be registered, the organization actually has an obligation to include in the minutes that the uh, director uh, dissented from the decision that was taken and they can also ask that reasons be included. Okay, so now let's talk about the, the essential of what goes into the minutes. You might want to put a lot more in than just this, but uh, in order to accomplish the three purposes uh, that I just discussed, this is kind of the bare bones of what has to go into the minutes. And it might be helpful to think, legally speaking, of who your audience is going to be. Um, if, if you're concerned about um, uh, future challenges, uh, if you're concerned as directors about your liability, then your audience is going to be ultimately a judge who is going to read contextually, is going to look for evidence. Um, so in, in, in uh, adding details to your minutes, you, you want to think about, well, what kind of evidence do you, do you want to create? Uh, what needs to go in or what's just going to distract or be useless um, to a judge? But again, there are lots of other uh, more important audiences sometimes for minutes. Okay, so here's the bare bones. Um, number one, the date, time, and place of meeting. Uh, number two, the name of the organization committee and the purpose of the meeting. Um, who attended, including any guests, and you should specify who the chair the secretary was, if there was a secretary, and whether anybody left. Anyone who wasn't there is considered to have consented to the decision, so uh, they should have an opportunity to read the minutes and register a dissent. That might be added later. 
um, the order of the agenda of topics, the summary of the key points of discussion, and again, if any advice was sought, um, the decisions that were ultimately made, um, and uh, whether there were any dissents, and also if anybody declared a conflict of interest. You have an obligation to include that in your minutes, a record of that, as well as any procedural formalities. These are optional, but start time, end time, who forwarded the motion, who seconded the motion, uh, etc. Now, some people have asked me over the years, uh, what does it take to make minutes official? Um, do they need to be signed? Uh, do you need to vote on them at the next meeting? And the answer is these aren't strictly necessary, but they can add to the weight of the minutes as evidence because it shows that you took a second look at them, look at them and that individuals you know, were willing to put their signatures on them. So that's a general overview of uh, minute taking for uh, the board meetings of Ontario uh, nonprofits. If you have any questions, or again, if you'd like to seek out some training, please contact me at benjamin.miller at charitylawgroup.ca or visit charitylawgroup.ca, and I'm sure someone would be happy to take your question. Thanks so much for listening.